Hello, I would like to show you how to use Macbeth to do a Bayesian model comparison. Because and I'll actually what I'll be doing first, I will first start the experiment. I will first do a, a Bayesian model comparison and then I'll discuss how it works. So for now we have to modify my alignment. And I just used GitHub Web Interface to edit that file. And I'm going to replace it by a different file that Babette uses about the pipettes. I'm just going to copy paste it in here. Use pipettes. And now the experiment, like the marginal likelihood comparison, is running. So now we go back to what I am doing because this run, like this um, experiment, will take approximately. Let's see what we did before. It will approximately take 10 minutes. So that means I have 10 minutes to explain what it's doing. Of course, you can skip to the end uh, of the video. So my bet is. Um, you, it's it's a it uses Babette, which is an R package that calls Beast2, and Beast2 is a, a phylogenetic Bayesian uh, tool. It's a very popular, and you can set a lot of things in Beast2 or in Babette. For example, what you can do is you can use if you have a DNA alignment. If you have a DNA alignment, um, like which we just supplied, if you have a DNA alignment like this, and we want to construct a phylogeny from that, we have a lot of choices we can do. One of the things we can modify is the site model, which denotes uh, the way we assume that the nucleotide substitutions work. For example, this is the simplest one, Dux Cantor 69. The Dux Cantor 69 model assumes that if you have one of the four nucleotides, it has an equal chance to mutate randomly to, um, to the others. So all rates between nucleotides are equal. This is the simplest model, uh, and uh, that's why it's fastest. But sometimes it may be an oversimplification. Well, the other extreme is the GTR model, which assumes that all rates uh, can be different. For example, from an A to a C can be a different rate, and from an A to a G and can be a different rate from an A to a T. This is a more extensive model, it takes more parameters, but also has more degrees of freedom. And what Macbeth does, and I will also display, explain the others, what Macbeth does, she will tell you which model you should use. Like which model is warranted to use. So if your alignment really appears to follow the simplest model, which is the Dukes Cantor 69 models, then um, Macbeth will tell you so. And it the, the key word here is warranted because the GTR model which has more parameters and thus has uh, more degrees uh, of freedom which always results in a better fit to the data um, like you could say that you should always use that model but this is not the case uh, this is not always warranted because we use a lot more computational power and more degrees of freedom with more parameters and we should penalize uh, any site model by it, the complexity it assumes of the world. So for that um, we use the marginal likelihood. So the marginal likelihood uh, the marginal likelihood is the fit of your data to a model. So in a Bayesian inference, usually you don't measure the marginal likelihood. If you have, um, 
if you do a, if you have Bayes equation like B, yeah Bayes equation, then it's always uh, below the division line. So the uh, the, the, the well, the, I think it's the denominator. It's below the division line. And usually you don't calculate that because you don't need it, uh, but calculating it is useful because it gives you uh, your fit to of the data to the model. And if your model is more complex, then the marginal likelihood also t um, uh, penalizes that model for it because it gets diluted more over all the degrees of freedom. So the marginal likelihood is 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 what you want to do, what you want to know if you compare uh, models or a combination of models because the higher that value the better your data fits your model and up until a year ago this was very hard to do well yeah so there's some scientific work in doing this and in June this year, June 2018 there was this paper by Harumata and Nikomara. There was this paper that uses nested sampling, nested sampling beast, and this is uh, this is a, an R package that uses uh, that uses nested sampling, which is like a trick to estimate the marginal likelihood. So it's by Maturana, Brewer, Clara, and Remco Baukaert. And Babette, Babette, she, uh, which is an R package, she can uh, do that. She can use nested sampling. So the marginal likelihood is estimated using nested sampling. And I've already told you about the side models, but we can also assume different things about the clock model. So the clock model is what you assume about the nuclear uh, about the mutation rate. So you can assume, if you assume a strict clock model, that the mutation rate is equal across uh, the full tree, which is the simplest model because it assumes a constant mutation rate over all branches. Whereas the relaxed log normal clock model assumes that every branch can have a different mutation rate, which uh, a different constant mutation rate, and that's this. These mutation rates are drawn from one big log normal distribution. So here we, in the straight clock model assumes everything is equal, the mutation rates are equal, and here the mutation rates are drawn from a dis from log normal distribution in this constant on each branch. So the straight clock model is a simpler model, but and the relaxed log normal model gives you more degrees of freedom. And again, it's a question if this is warranted, because Macbeth estimates the marginal likelihood, which is the fit of the data to your model, and takes into account if your model is more complex. So checks if it's warranted to use a relaxed log normal. Uh, clock model. We also have the tree prior uh, which assumes which is your assumption about the speciation process and in this case I only use two because I think these two are very compatible so we can assume what the Yule model does it's also called a constant uh, birth model. So the Yule model assumes that there is no extinction and assumes that the speciation rate or the branching rate uh, remains equal throughout time. Well, we know this is weird if you work on extinct, uh, um, so we know species go extinct, uh, but sometimes there are reasons to, that you can use the Yule model. And the birth death model assumes that the birth rate remains constant through time, but also the extinction rate can be there, is there, can be non zero, and also remains constant through time. And again, the Yule model is the simplest model, and it has a marginal likelihood. And the marginal likelihood is the fit of your data to the model, uh, and takes into account if the if the combination of models in this case is warranted 
um, to pick. So this is uh, this is what uh, Macbeth does. I'm just check how far she is. Eight minutes or two minutes more, per, or prop, more or less. So this is what she will show from our um, the pipettes we just let her um, investigate, and then she will also show the best model. So the the default alignment, which is in the in Macbeth, not now, but it will be the primates again. It was about primates, and it um, shows you that you should use this combination. Should have used this combination. It's the best fit, so it has the uh, it has the highest likelihood. So, and because this is a logarithm, uh, e to the power of this is bigger than e to the power of this value. So this is the highest value. That's great. And so apparently, if for the primate we should have used an HKY model, which is some intermediate nucleotide substitution model, strict clock, and we should use a birth death rate. So, for example, for the birth death rate, it was warranted to use more parameters and uh, over a, a U model. But for the clock, we should we can just safely assume, or we should assume that these um, are that the mutation rate is constant throughout the simulation for all branches. And the side model HKY means it's more complex than the Jukes Cantor model. Jukes Cantor is an oversimplification, but also it's not too comp not that complex that we should have used a GTR model in our comparison. So we should have used HKY. So this shows you which combination you should pick when you do uh, a complete beast run. This does not tell me anything yet about what the phylogeny looks like. You really should use Babette or Beast 2 for that. Um, but uh, it does show you which model to use. So we see that Macbeth, Macbeth is done. So let's take a look at her results. So this is apparently how we should analyze the pipettes. So here is the table again. And the best model in this case is GTR model. We should assume a relaxed log normal clock. Uh, assume birth death rate and um, well, this is the marginal likelihood. Alright, so what I've showed you, what I've just showed you is that Macbeth allows you to do, uh, to compare the marginal likelihoods uh, in Bayesian inference using only one web interface uh, thing. So you don't need to install anything. All you need to do is you have to fork this GitHub on your account, modify this alignment file. Actually, you can also do a pull request, whatever you want. You have to activate Travis. So if you have a GitHub account, that's also free. And then without any work you have to do, you can do your Bayesian model comparison. So it was a, a long video because while well, the process takes 10 minutes, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy Macbeth and have a nice day.